is good that we are here. I think we can honestly all say that in great boldness and confidence. It is good that we are here. Well, we thank all of you for being here tonight. Yeah, go ahead and be seated. That's fine. <laughs> we thank you all for being here. This has been... I know I can speak on behalf of our pastors that this has been a fulfillment truly in all areas of the heart, of the soul, and our spirits. This has surpassed all, all imaginations, all of what we desired. This is, y'all have played the part that y'all have been assigned. It's, it has brought a, a true heart's desire and the leading of the spirit into full fruition. It's, it's been a beautiful, beautiful time. And certain things could not have taken place to the magnitude that they have without y'all's active faith meeting what pastors heard the Lord say this weekend would be. So tonight, this, this session is going to be just a little shift, not too much of a shift, but it's going to be a little younger, a little bit louder. This is you. This is, this is a youth-led service. Uh, 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 all of our youth and the youth generation that grew up with me and the ones just a few years older than me, like Justin, are very, very excited. <laughs> so, so uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to turn your attention to the screen. We're going to watch uh, one more video. I was just reading in my Bible. I got a rainbow. I'm a horsey lover. Who are you? I am a whosoever. Who are you? Me? I'm a whosoever. Who are you? I'm a whosoever. Who are you? I'm a whosoever. Who are you? Me? I'm a whosoever. Who are you? 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 Me? I'm a whosoever. Who are you? I'm a whosoever. Who are you? Who, me? I'm a whosoever. I'm not just a whosoever. I'm a Mark 11, 23 whosoever. This is this is our camp 2022 I'm a whosoever camp video uh, if you're new new or newer to the church we uh, two years ago we began we had lit before my time here uh, as, as a leader in the youth we had uh, we had they had, pastor Heath had leading from the Holy Spirit as well as pastor Jody that we would host our own camp uh, here for the youth instead of going out to discovery camps or out of state to other camps we would host our own here uh, and it, they had the, the word from God that it would be called the unmasked camp yeah. to take off your mask your filter the crap that you look through that distorts the way you see things uh, 
for, for the ones that were here earlier, Dad gave a small word from it. That is where my road to Damascus was. Uh, grown up in church my entire life. Lot, lots of seed sown. Uh, however, I was not walking in it to the full magnitude that I knew that I knew I needed to and that I wanted to really. Uh, and during that camp, just I was here to play music, and that was it. I wanted to know the times in between sessions so I could go home. It was my weekend off. I was working at a prison, and standing up there on the the last night service, we were getting ready to play a song called Freedom, and. I went to put on a mask that I was going to, we were signing masks and throwing off, I was throwing masks off to, to the youth. It was cool. It was like a Motley Crue concert. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, dear, right before we started that song, I went to put a mask on and the true glory of God hit me and it felt like an entire, my entire life went <laughs> that fast. And for the first time, I looked at this mask that I was holding and I felt like I was holding fear, insecurity, and anger. And now it was external. It was no longer internal anymore. I can fight something that's out here with the word in my mouth, but it's no longer hiding in the dark. So I had a true road to Damascus experience there, and I truly understand what Paul meant when he said, everything that I've worked my entire life for, I now count as nothing. I forsake it, and I embrace the new life, and I head straight forward to the glory that is God. And that all happened from a youth camp. So believe me when I tell you, lives are changed. We've, like the song says, we have seen troubled souls delivered. We have seen addicts finally free. We have seen prodigals return. We've seen families restored. Uh, that is our focal point, is to bring the good news to the young generation. Because without us teaching, like Joshua, and said in the end of Joshua, there arose a generation that did not know God. That is on the fault of Joshua and the people that he had. Great, mighty men, but they did a poor job of teaching the young generation. So that's what our goal is, is to teach the word of grace to the young generation. Yes. Uh, the next year, we had our camp last year, uh, and it was, oh, it was, it was incredible. Um, I know youth, I know, was it good? Yeah. It, was, it was incredible. So this year, um, we're blessed enough to have camp again this year. As I'm a whosoever camp, Mark, and it, the, the scripture in Mark is, if, if, any, if whosoever would say to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, when you, turn, when you come to the terms which you understand and progression through your faith in the name of Jesus, when you activate that word and you stand both feet planted on his word, Whosoever would say to this depression, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will happen through my faith in the name of Jesus and my development in him. No matter what my mind says, I keep the word in my heart and coming out of my mouth. So that is the focal point of this camp this year. So we're having fundraisers for it. That's part of what you're seeing outside. All the Any, any funding that you're providing uh, to the church right now during all this is going to renovate youth. Uh, a lot of it is going for scholarship funds. Is our, the, the, the Heartland Ministries' true heart is that no youth have to pay their own way. And nobody will ever say, I want to go, but I can't pay. My family doesn't have any money. Well, I promise you, you will have a way. Money is not going to hold you back from your destiny point of contact with the glory of God. So, I believe. So. The, the slides have changed about you know, 17 times in the last five minutes. I apologize. So we thank everybody. We thank everybody who's serving. Yeah, there's people who would love to be in here. However, their honor and their love and commitment to the body is greater than their own desires and selfish. I want to be in here. Yes, that's great, but somebody's out watching your baby so you can be in here and experience this. So please give them honor. Give them a hand things in ministry it's not you just you don't just show up and sit down and have a good time no there's, there's things many many things in motion the detail is talking continuously with one another making sure that y'all can be safe and your children are safe where you don't have to keep an eye over the side of your shoulder making sure you're okay 
there's ushers. I mean, you, how many times do you walk past that door and don't even say thank you to the usher that opens your door just because you're used to it? You're used to it. That man doesn't have to do that. He does it because of his honor and heart of servitude to the body and to God. So we thank everybody. Uh, at this time, I'm going to bring up my brother, Yehoshua. Thank you, Lord. Thank y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who is ready to bring the Lord's tithe? If y'all weren't here for the Brother Ty's service earlier this morning, I highly encourage you to go watch it, especially if tithing is something that you struggle with he does a great, great job in just giving practical examples of how he did it, how him and his wife did it together. And it was so good. And it was so in line with just what's been on all of our hearts, on Brother Bob's heart and on my heart. The last two or three weeks at youth, we've just been more so targeting tithe than offering and how essential the tithe is and how when you offer but you don't tithe, the power of your offering is not as much as it would be. This is foundational things that we're talking about. The Lord gave me this, I guess, nugget, you could call it, yesterday. And of course, Brother Ty basically explained it in detail. But it, it's, if I can't trust God with money, how could I trust him with the deep things? Why, when we tithe, is there something holding me back in my heart? Last week in Wednesday service, uh, we gave an example, and I'm going to share it again because I believe it will bless y'all, but I asked Pastor Heath because he is an owner of a construction company. I said, and I'm one of his employees, and I said, if I have a tool that I break. It was under my supervision and it broke. It could have been my fault. It could have just been a happenstance. If that happens, who's responsible and whose job is it to make sure that that gets replaced? And he said, it's mine. And I asked him, why is it you? And he said, because I own the company. Now, when we tithe, this is us saying, not my money, God, but it's your money. I give it to you. You are the owner of everything that comes into my life. Therefore, you are responsible for those things, for the mistakes that I make. And as the owner of the company, if it is something that I do, something that's foolish or whatever, he will confront me about that in love but he'll make sure that it doesn't happen. And if it is, because this is life and life happens and things unforeseen happen that you have no control of, that's why this is life. You can't do it by yourself. Your financial life, you have to give it to him so that he can take care of those things. That is a load and a burden that we were not made to carry. Real quick, could y'all pull up Matthew 21, verse 29? Uh, it could be New King James, or it, translation doesn't really matter. Thank you, Lord. Uh, could you go to verse 28? Okay, so people are, are questioning Jesus and, said, and he says, but what do you think? A man had two sons and he came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. And the son said, I will not. But afterward, this is big, he regretted it 
and he went. Next verse, please. Then he came to the second and said, likewise, and he answered and said, so this is the second son, and he asked him the same thing. He said, go out into the vineyard. And he said, okay, I'll go, but he did not go. Next verse, please. So they said, this is Jesus said, which of the two did the will of his father? And they said to him, the first. That's all we'll read on that one. But so, if anything you get them from those verses is that it's never too late. You can tell God, no, I don't want to tithe. I'm not ready or whatever. But you always have room to do the will of God. It's never too late. You can always go back and do what he desires you to do. And that's the tithe. He desires you to tithe, to give what's his. So let's, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this invitation that you have brought to us that we haven't had to create but you created God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the ability to give you ownership over our lives. We trust you with money and we trust you with the deep things too. Thank you God for your Holy Spirit leading us today, tonight, leading us to release, leading us to enter into a new boldness, leading us to worship you with all of our heart. And this tithe and the offerings, God, are blessed. So be it. Amen. Good to have you guys. I'm actually up here to waste time while the baskets get passed around. So I'm going to piggyback on the back on the back of Caleb with what he was saying about thanking you guys for sewing into renovate. It's huge, y'all. Last year we done fundraisers, and the fundraisers brought in good money, but nothing brought in what this body brought in nothing and when it come down time when it come down to it and we had to pay that final bill and trust me that bill's up there it's up there when we had to pay that final bill because of y'all and what you sold into renovate nothing had to be tapped out of the general fund I don't remember how many how many uh youth we had that literally went to camp on scholarships but I want to say that was more than half more than half that we took to camp went on scholarships that's because of you it's because of your commitment your dedication to your kids as well as those if you don't have kids but you're just like five dollars into the youth fund right now we've got We've got cards on that back wall. Those cards, literally, they go from $1 to $100. Some of them are gone. Take it, put money in it, drop it in the box. Simple. Simple. There's also cards over there that says $200 on them. And those are scholarship cards. Put your money in them, put them in the box. In fact, get two or three. Get two or three. All right, so we're going to get started with service tonight, and I'm going to hand it over to Nate, because the next part of this program refers to him, and I'll let him deal with that. (laughs) Come on! You guys, seriously, in the church? Come on, y'all! Jeez, man! (laughs) 
So this is, uh, I'm going to try not to, I may need some Kleenex here in a minute. I'm going to try not to. It's just coming from, oh, just in case. And that's just because I'm very proud right now. I'm very happy with the work that the Lord is doing. So I think it was four weeks ago when this was announced. And some of you may not know, but Renovate has a drama ministry. And I think something that some people kind of lose, might lose some focus on is the word ministry, because in that is minister. So we minister to people. Minister. You got people who are wonderful with their words when they're up here, like we've seen earlier today. Something that when I was a youth that always was the best for me that I took in the most of was visual. When I saw skits, I got more out of those things. In camps, sometimes, a lot of times, Pastor Heath will have visuals that he relates to with the words. So for me, I relate this word to that visual, and I can tell you right now, if I thought of some one right off the top of my head, it's probably going to have a visual that Pastor had or Pastor Heath had, that sort of thing. So transformed, I knew with only four weeks, we could probably squeeze, we, we, we meet once a week, and I knew we could probably maybe add a couple extra days in there, and, uh, but I, I also don't want them to feel obligated to, to not do homework or skip basketball or baseball, those sorts of things, because I want it to be something that's fun and not give the devil any place to come into and try to steal anything, kill anything, and allow us to have fun and then minister. So then I was like, well, I don't want them trying to come up with and try to memorize in six rehearsals and then to have that pressure on them like that. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just do a monologue and keep it simple. And then I got to thinking, not too long ago, I think Brother Bob had mentioned, Heartland is not your run-of-the-mill church. And so I got to thinking, well, why does it always have to be a stage play? And so things just started rolling. And what you're going to see is a lot of hard work. It was a team effort. And it was all the will of God. And it was the work of God. And no matter how much stress that might have came into place, how much loss of sleep, any of that, it was all worth it because of the glory of God. It's for the glory of God. And that's why it got done. And that's why this is happening. So with that being said, I present to you transformed.
what you have to do. You got this. Hello? Hi, sweetie. What you up to? Not much, Mom. I'm just checking on you. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, Mom. Well, you haven't been at church very much lately, and your dad said that when he asked you how your job was, you went off on him. Is that true? Yeah, I have something really important right now. Can I call you later? You can talk to me, Zach. You know that. The word says that with all your heart, rely on the Lord, and he will lead you and guide you in all your decisions. Mom, I really have to go. All right. Please be safe. I love you. Love you too, Mom. I'm sorry to bother you. I was wondering if you could talk to Zach. He always listens to you, and I think you're the only one that can get through to him. Okay, I'll get to him as soon as I can. Hey, Rusty. Hey, where are you at? Where you told me to be. Okay, good. You remember the deal, right? Hello, Earth to Zach. What? Yeah, I'm ready. It's not what I asked. Sorry. Let's do this. Hey, something's come up. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you later. I have to shoot for tomorrow. <laughs> This guy called it out and I ended up losing. Dude, I hate when that happens. That sucks so bad. Yeah. Oh, we're here. Hey, Zach. Yeah. Remember the conversation you and me had about the mountains? Yeah, what about it? Well, what mountains have you been having? What do you, what do you mean? Well, you kind of have ignored me and not hung out with me for a while. And I just know that's not you. I wanted to let you know that I'm here for you. And I love you. I, I love you too. It's just that... I'm not the mountains, am I? No, no, of course not. It's just I'm going through a lot right now. But it's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. Well, like you told me, be a whosoever. All right, come on. or something? I don't need this. Tyler, come on. Zach, hold on. Back off. All of you back off. What are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything. I just don't need this right now. 
Everything okay over there? We're all good. Let's just stay out of the flesh, okay guys? We're just trying to invite you to something that we love you. Hey, you got my number. Call, text, I'm by you. I know that you have a good heart, Sam. You just need to have an open heart. We wanted to invite you to this. talk to y'all. I just want to ask y'all to keep flowing in the glory with me and step out of your comfort zones and gain your freedom and let's praise the Lord. Check one, two. Come on, let's worship him. 
Thank you, Lord, if we would all just begin to lift our hands and thank him. Father, we thank you for your glory to fall like rain. It's a fiery rain. Lord, it's the sparks from your fire that we're catching. It's the sparks from the fire of the Lord that we're catching like rain. 
thank you, Lord, for the dew of your fire, that we would begin to feel it even tangibly in your presence. Thank you, Jesus, for the healing that is in our hands, and that as we begin to touch one another, that we even can release healing. Thank you, Jesus, for the dew and the rain and the flood of your fire. As the river of the Lord begins to roll upon us, Jesus, like the wave that rolls upon us, Jesus. If you would release your faith, the person next to you, youth, you have the faith of Jesus we lay hands upon one another and we release our faith. Youth, if you begin to hear a word in your spirit, like depression or fear, you're picking up on things and you release your faith towards that person. If you're hearing fear, Father, I thank you that you've not given them the spirit of fear, but you've given them a spirit of power and of love and of a sound, clear, not timid, disciplined mind. If you begin to hear the word depression, Father, I thank you that they will begin to rejoice in the Lord and in the power of his might in them. Adults, release your faith. You release your faith for them. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father, for your glory that is full of beauty for ashes. Jesus, we praise you and we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, church, if you would begin to make your way back to your seats, stay in the present, stay in the mode of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Well, it is my honor to introduce the shepherd of Renovate Youth Church, the shepherd of the flock of the youth. <laughs> if y'all would welcome Renovate Youth Pastor Heath Henry. Glory, glory. Glory. Thank you. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Y'all please be seated. Please. Hallelujah. Would a uh, transformed, would y'all please come back up here? All of you. Even the bad guy. This is their first short film. What do y'all think? How do you think they did? If you was somebody that assisted with this, other than you, you stay where you're at, assisted with this, would you please come up here? I want to show you what this take, what, what it takes to make this happen. The little six minute film. You guys, I want y'all look at me. I'll eat. Thank you. Thank you for what you did, for what you're going to be doing. Because that's just part one. You guys <laughs> done wonderful. I couldn't have asked for anything better knocked it out of the park. But let me tell you something. Y'all did what y'all did, but it wasn't in one take. There's lots of takes. There's lots of takes. But it took, it took somebody to take a lot of takes and spend a lot of hours to make that happen and make that come together, and one man did it by himself. That's Mr. Nate right there. <laughs> Thank you.
If I had a hat, I'd tip it off to you, brother. That was wonderful. I look forward to what you're going to do with this next time. Because we will see this part two. We've already talked about it. It's happening. So, y'all go back to seats. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. Glory to God. Whew. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I got to get, I got to get, like Pastor Jody was when she first started, she looked disorganized to start with. I'm kind of a little misty-eyed, a little misty-eyed. That kind of happens. It's been a while since I've been that guy. So. And we're here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to have to do this. I don't have a choice. It happened. It happened. Whew. I've got to follow all of that. And, and not only that, but everything we've had so far. So the only way that's going to happen is if it's not me. Because the me, I'm not qualified at all to try to do what we have done so far since we've been here. I'm, I'm not. But I am, I am obedient to what I feel like God is leading me to say tonight. So first off, I've got to start out with one thing. And I'm sure you, some of you guys can help me out with this. I'm a whosoever. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I'm a whosoever. Who are you? <laughs> there you go. That's how it needs to be. Zoe, come here, baby. By the Spirit. Don't try to make up no words. You go with what the Spirit leads you, okay? I don't care if it's in English or not. You just go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, help me. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for everyone who has come tonight. I pray that their hearts are open and ready to take in, absorb whatever you have for us today. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your love. And for your peace. <laughs> and I thank you for being here with every single one of us. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. And within us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank, you, Lord. thank you, Lord, for your glory. <laughs> yes. You're so glorious. Yes, you are. Thank Lord. you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, there's only one way to start this. Hold them up. If you've got a Bible, hold it up. If you use your phone, hold it up. All of you, not just these kids, all you adults too. Now, we use our words to proclaim things, right? Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. It, I am what it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. It's that simple. It's that simple. Here we go. Oh, wow. All right, so we've been on a long road for the, my cord is going to be in my way. Pardon me. That's okay. Thank you. Try to make this work. We've been on a road for a good while now, since two weeks before the new year. 
And in this road, we've seen a lot of things transpire. We've seen the works and acts of faith happen. Things have happened that's just unbelievable that you can't explain in, in the worldly sense of explaining it. We've seen it. We've had it happen right here. We have a house. So, where did all this start? Well, it started with that man right there. It started with that woman right there. The word of the Lord came to her, and out of obedience, she spoke it out, and Ramah said in that our new year starts now. That was two weeks before the new year. I'm going to point something out before I go, but it's not even part of the message, but we work up to the glory weekend, and we get two weeks before glory weekend, and we're there. Two weeks before the new year, we start our new year. Two weeks before glory weekend, and we're there. So in actuality, this weekend is, I mean, it is wonderful. It is wonderful. But we've been here for two weeks. <laughs> we've just only been, we've only been gathering on Sunday and Wednesday, but we've been here. It's been an awesome thing. Uh, Pastor has taught and ministered on the crowning of the year of goodness. He's taught on being called up into the glory. He's ministered on the climbing and being faithful in the climb. He has taught on being in the midst of the glory for days before the Lord appeared. He has used the word to show us physically what to expect, but has not used, but has not limited expectation. He has ministered on the spirit at work in us and amongst us. Wednesday night and last night, he deciphered a mystery in the word about the river of God. And we pray that our pastor will decipher the mysteries of the Bible. And this man has done it many times over. But this one in particular, he deciphered the mystery of the word about the, in the word about the river of God that broke up into four parts. Now mind you, one river broke up into four parts. One man is shepherding this flock. This week, this weekend, he broke up into four ministers besides the one. That wasn't planned. The river thing came just a few weeks ago. One man leading, four branches break out. Four different ministers ministering besides the one. He prophesied, which is something that, like this, he doesn't do. But he prophesied that we are right now in the year of increase. We next will be in, or the first part of the year is increase. The second quarter of the year will be bursting forth. Then it will be, the third quarter will be rapidness will take place. And we will finish the year with rushing fruitfulness. Pastor, I publicly say I receive that word and I echo it. I take hold of it. And I know lots of people in here do that with us. The presence of the Lord has continued to manifest itself in this house, not just this weekend, but he's been manifesting, it's been building up, but he's been manifesting itself here. Every time we gather... He manifests. If you've come here tonight, you've come here expecting manifestation. We've already seen it. But we're not done. We are not done. We're not done tonight. If you've been in service at all in the last three weeks, you've felt the presence of the Lord. If, there's a re if you haven't been here, but you haven't felt this presence that everybody's talking about, more than likely there's something you need to look inside about and need to get make right with God 
And it may even mean back right with another person. I know without a shadow of a doubt, because I have to not only, I just trust, trust these pastors, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that they heard from God about Glory Weekend. We've been invited. We RSVP'd. And we are here. We are in the midst of of the glory. And in the words of Peter, it's good to be here. Then the New Living Translation actually doesn't say good. It says, it is wonderful to be here. I was actually only going to use the word wonderful, but I was like, man, that thing's been said so many times, I got to start out with good. Other people, everybody would go, no, you missed it. <laughs> All right, if you guys would bear with me. I believe the Lord, Lord has something for us. In Exodus 34, the end of 34, we're going to pull one up in just a second, you guys. So get ready. Don't put it up yet. But we're going to pull up Exodus 34, 35. But in Exodus 34, at the, very, at the very end of 20, it starts at 29. It's talking about Moses coming off the Mount of Sinai. He's carrying the tablets. He's been in the presence of the Lord for 40 days. And he comes down to the mountain. He's bringing the, the tablets down. And the people are afraid of him. They're afraid of him because he has this... He, he looked like a nightlight, Pastor says. He has this glow about him. He has something about him that people can go. It, it, they were in fear of this. So I want to, I want to, I want to read something. I want you guys to read it with me. Let's hope, let's turn that up. Let's put it up there for me, please. Let's do the. Uh, let me see which one I was in. Let's do the NLT, please. And the people of Israel would see the radiant glow. Of his face, so he would put the veil over his face until he returned, till he returned to speak with the Lord. I gotta have to change it. Go to thirty-four. I'm sorry. This glasses on and off stuff is getting old. Okay, we'll start here and then we'll go to. You got thirty-four? We're gonna start at thirty-four and then go to thirty. But whenever he went into the tent of the meeting to speak with the Lord, he would remove the veil until he came out again. Then he would give the people whatever instructions the Lord had given him. Now go to 35. And the people of Israel would see the radiant glow of his face. I believe we're going to see radiant glow tonight on some people's faces. Because of where we're going when we get done with this and what we're going to do and what you're going to do, I believe that something's going to happen in your life. And we're literally going to see the radiant glow. Now, there's already people going, eh, I don't know about all that. I don't believe you can see it. You know what? I don't either. Now, I, see, I have seen people that's been in the presence of the Lord and I've known they've been in the presence of the Lord without talking to them. How would I know? There was something on them. Why does a radiant glow got to be? You sense it on them because of my spirit knows your spirit. I sense it on you. I sense the glow in you. Now, I, I've had this happen to me one time. Didn't know it. At Unmasked Camp, the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night. I came up here. Um, and I was in the presence of the Lord for a while. While I was here, they gave me my message and all that kind of stuff. But when the morning came, I walked out the door, and Brother Ty walked, literally just walked right into me. And the first words out of his mouth was not good morning. It was, you've been in the presence of the Lord. How'd you know? You just knew. Something here was seeing the radiance glow 
in here. There's been many a times that we've been in, in service and people just, and it's like, man, the radiant glow in here. Your spirit sensed it. So I believe tonight we're going to have that. All right. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians 3, 16 through 18, in the Passion. You know, you know where I'm going to be. All right, we're going to read this. We're going to read through this, and then we're going to come back and kind of dissect it a little bit. Not a lot, just a little. There are some jewels. All right, let's let's read with sixteen. Everybody, read with me. But the moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, the veil is lifted, and they see. Now. The Lord I'm referring to is the Holy Spirit, and wherever He is Lord, there is freedom. We can all draw close to Him with the veil removed from our faces, and with no veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. We are being transfigured into His very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Huge, y'all. Huge. That right there is everything that we've been talking about, glory to glory. From glory to glory. Okay, so we are being transfigured into His image. Being, the word being, is a progressive, ongoing. It's an ongoing work. It's, a, it's an ongoing venture. It's not just one time. In Ty's word, it's a peeling of an onion. One layer at a time. One layer at a time. So, one layer at a time, on using the scriptures that we've just read... It says that we all can draw close to him with a veil removed from our face. Okay. And we're all being transfigured into his very image. But we're being, being transfigured. Being is what? Ongoing. It's ongoing. It's progressive. Yes. Okay, this is, about to, this is about to be cool, y'all. This is about to really get good. In verse 17, it said, Now the Lord I'm referring to is the Holy Spirit, and wherever he is Lord, there is freedom. Today, Pastor talked about Pastor talked about the presence is the glory. Correct? All right, so the presence of God is the glory. Is the Holy Spirit one of the Godhead? Okay, so the Holy Spirit is God. So in the Holy Spirit, there is the presence, which is the glory. All right, this is about to get good. This is about to get good. When we... Okay, I can't do this. I can't wear those no more. I can't see. But then I can't see. <laughs> it's about to get good. Y'all just hang with me. This is about to get good. When someone turns to the Lord and the veil is lifted, what comes in you? The Spirit of God, which is the glory. So glory just came. All right, here we go. This is, this is about, I'm excited about this. Bell is lifted. You've stepped into glory. Now something happens inside, and you're like, there's just something I need to do different. I need to fellowship with other believers. So I'm going to go to church. You go to church, and, and I, this is good, and I need to be here. Revelation just came to you. Revelation just set in side. Now, that revelation is not up here. It's here, which is where? In your spirit. Now, it says, it says back there where... 
it says here where the Holy Spirit is, wherever he is Lord, there is freedom. So if you, all this, if you decide church, is, it's something that's got to be a part of my life. It's going to be a part of my life. Revelation just set in. The Spirit of the Lord just revealed and now it became a part of your life. So the Spirit of the Lord just became your Lord in that area. So freedom just came. So if the Spirit of the Lord is there, so is His presence, which is the? You just went from glory to glory. So, just went to glory. And then something else happens. Something else comes inside. And it's like, man, I really got to start reading my word. And then revelation sets in. I really do got to read my word. And then all of a sudden, reading your word becomes part of your life. And the Holy Spirit becomes the Lord of your reading your word. So then all of a sudden, freedom set in. Where freedom set in, the presence set in. And where the presence is at, the glory is at. You just went from glory to glory. Every time something happens that you, whatever it is, not, that, now those are the big ones, but there's a lot of small ones in here. There's a lot of things that, man, I just got to quit cussing. I got to quit cussing. And so you work on it, you work on it, and finally you, I'm quitting. Now, the Lord has become, the Holy Spirit has become the Lord of your tongue because now you're guarding it. So if he becomes the Lord of your tongue, according to what we just read, freedom just set in. Where there's freedom, there's the presence. And where the presence is, there's the glory. You just went from glory to glory. So every time this happens, you go from glory to glory. No matter how big it is or how small it is, you go from glory to glory. It happens every time. Every single time. Glory to glory. You're eating a candy bar or something and you're walking down the mall and you finish it and you take the wrapper and you chunk it at the wastebasket. It misses. I used to be that guy that walked on. But something inside of me said, that's not right. So I go, I pick it up, I put it in the trash. I stop my car because my, my uh, sonic straw wrapper hits the ground. So I stop my car, get out of my car, get my sonic wrapper, and I throw it in the trash. Something inside of me just started telling me that even small things like that are wrong. So the Holy Spirit starts telling me this small thing. Even something this small starts telling me this. So now the Holy Spirit has become in here, the sensing that I have has become the Lord of those decisions. And so if the Holy Spirit's the Lord of those decisions, that means I just got freedom. And where there's freedom, there's the presence. And where there's the presence, there's the glory. We just went from glory to glory. Every decision you make, Every time you've decided, I'm not doing that no more. And the Lord takes it, you let the Lord take it up. And the Holy Spirit becomes Lord of that. Freedom set in. The presence of the Lord is there. You had just, glory just set in. You just went from glory to glory. More glory, more glory, more glory. Glory to glory. Glory doesn't just happen on glory weekend. It happens when we're out there. It happens when you're at home and, and instead of, instead of uh, snapping back at your child or not back talking your mama, something in here said, I'm not going to do that no more because it's just not right. The Spirit of the Lord just set in. He became Lord of that part of your life. Then freedom set in. And where the freedom's at, there's the presence. Where the presence is at, is there's the glory. You just went from glory to glory. I'm writing a song up here, am I? Praise the Lord. Excuse me. 
Praise you, Lord. Got to find where I was at. <laughs> so when you're doing this, when you're doing this, you're actually what you're doing is you're being obedient to this. The obedience of, I just got to do this. And the sensitivity starts getting in more and you start listening to this more because this has been right every time. And so you start listening more and it gets to the point of picking up the wrapper. To the, if you're driving, I'm going this way. I realize it's a long way, but I just don't know why I'm going this way. But I'm, not, I'm supposed to go this way. No reason at all. As far as you know, nothing happened. But if you'd have went that way, you might have had a wreck. It's not our place to worry about that. Our place is to be sensitive to this, to listen. And when you're walking in the glory, that happens. When you're walking and living in the glory, that happens. You literally do stuff. You don't have to understand. You just do it. It also teaches you to keep this thing shut. It teaches you when to say, what to say, and how to say. So as glory grows, and glory grows in you, goes from glory to glory to glory, and it goes, when you do have something like this, it's wonderful. Because you've already come expecting, because you've already been doing it. You guys, I'm here to encourage you that the fact that it's, you've already been doing the glory. You didn't have to come here to get in the glory. You're already doing it. You already have glory. You've been going glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. You're already doing it. This here is just a boost. It's a bonus. Mo, would you bring your team up, please? I want everybody to say, I'm in the glory. I'm going to the glory. I'm, going to the glory. I'm, in, the glory. I'm in the glory. And I'm going to the glory. glory. Alright, so the next question should be, how are we going to the glory? We're already here. We're already here. I mean, we're in church. What else can we do to go from glory to glory? Well, we're going to do the same thing as what you've been doing from going from glory to glory. You're being obedient. You start, you're learning to be obedient to this in here. You're learning that I just need to listen to this in here. Here in just a minute, worship team's going to play another song. And when they play that song, I want you to turn inward. But I want you to listen to what I'm going to say. There are so many times that you're missing out on what God wants to do for you, including this weekend. And it's all because of a lack of disobedience. So tonight, we're going to end this time with doing something to get out of your comfort zone. It's so easy to sit in that pew. It's so easy to stand up right there. And I'm, this is my spot. This is my assigned spot. It's got my name on it. I did call you out. I apologize. This is my assigned spot. We do this all the time. So tonight, when we start playing, I want you, I want you to literally Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of that seat. I don't want nobody in the pews. Get in the aisles. God will prompt you on what to do. I just, I, I don't feel, you already see, I, I. There we go, I. You just, you, just blocked the, you just blocked God from being able to work in you, I. What are people going to think? That's the devil. Because I'll tell you right in here, right now, there ain't nobody in here cares. They don't care if you get up and run. They don't care if you jump and, and dance. They don't care. Because you know why? 
they're doing the same thing. So for you to go from glory to glory, you're going to get up and move. We did this to the youth a couple of weeks ago, and it changed everything we did at youth. It completely changed youth, completely changed how our service was rolling. In fact, we haven't quit doing worship yet because of it. Mo, I want you all to go ahead. I'm going to continue, but you all go ahead and sing. Do whatever it is you're doing. Chicken talk. Guys, I just want to encourage each and every one of you. We are, we are told to have childlike faith. And when you see these children up here and they're worshiping their Lord, I want you as parents to come and join them and imitate the faith of your children. That's what it takes. Sometimes it just takes you getting out of your comfort zone because of your age or maybe the house that you grew up in didn't worship like this. But I, I encourage you to join today. I encourage you to join the youth and imitate the faith of Renovate Youth for yourself tonight. And I want you to take that and I want you to hold to that. And I want you to tell me at some point if the Lord worked in your heart tonight just by being obedient to stepping out in faith and doing that. I also want to say to the spouses and to the mothers and fathers of children who you are waiting for your children to come into the obedience of the Lord. I want to encourage you and tell you that the Lord told me night before last that they're in the rivers with us. They may be at the waterfront, but you placed them in the water when you gave them back to the Lord. And they may not be swimming and flowing as fast as you, but their feet are in the water. And I know that they're gonna be coming back to you. Those rivers are flowing. The gushing waters are coming. And I just want you to know that they're being called back into the kingdom in which you gave them. So please continue to pray and continue to call your children what the Lord calls them and pray and leave them to the Lord for him to do the mighty work in them.
get on your knees. He may be telling you to jump. He may be telling you to yell. He may be telling you to run. Be obedient. Go from glory to glory. It only comes by obedience. Only comes by obedience. Go from glory to glory. Do it tonight. The Lord will tell you. He may tell you. Go put your hand on that person and pray for them. Go to that person and encourage them. Follow what the Lord tells you to do. Be obedient to what He says and move from glory to glory. And just imagine if you would be obedient today, what tomorrow night, tomorrow day will bring for you right here. From glory to glory, you can only get it by obedience. By obedience to what this is telling you, which frees you up. Because the Holy Spirit sets in on top of that and becomes Lord of that. When He becomes Lord of that, freedom sets in. The presence of the Lord is there, and there is the glory. It may be to cry. It may be just to be still. You may be like me. I'm a mover. When worship's happening, I'm like this. It may be for me, I got to go. Just be still. Listen to what God's telling you. Close your eyes. As we sing it again, close your eyes and ask God, is there anything you want me to do? Because I want to be obedient. obedience is just for you. It may be for somebody else. The word that you give because, man, I've never done that before. I've just never gone up to somebody, put my hand on them and said, I just want you to know God loves you. That may be enough for that person that changes their life forever. Then because of that, they may say, you know what? God does love me. And because he loves me, I'm going to make him my Lord. You are just instrumental in that person's salvation. By obedience, by your obedience, you can change the life of somebody. It doesn't just come by the preacher. The preacher just gives the seed. The harvest comes when y'all start acting on the seed. What if your touch, you don't even know that you have this in your hand, but what if God wants to use you to heal somebody and out of obedience, you're like, I just, I don't know why I'm just supposed to touch you. And that right there killed them from cancer, from depression, from anxiety. What if what your obedience would do, your obedience could 
change the life of somebody. And it will change your life. As you move from glory to glory. One more time, Mo. church and we're to be the church not just in here that prompting is outside of these walls the more you learn to prompt the more you learn to trust God and the more you walk in the glory message from the youth pastor is not just ministered and touched to the youth. It is ministered to the elders and the pillars of this body. And one pillar in particular has had a word from the Lord since last night, Pastor Heath. And she texted me and she said, I knew I was supposed to say something. Dressed it together in faith. She has stepped up tonight and put fear down and said, I will obey God. So get 
give honor to Miss Barbara Clopton. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's going to take her time and not do it in fear, but do it afraid because that's what the Lord said when you step out and do it. Lots of things will spring forth. Hallelujah. Like everyone in this house, I have a story and a story of pain. But I came through a painful situation and I forgave. And I knew I forgave. I could be with this person and there was not any anger. There was no longer any pain. But I found that in spite of forgiving, and I had forgiven and I knew, I knew to my very deep, deepest core I had forgiven. But I still was experiencing torment. And I didn't understand why because I forgave and I forgave myself. But cycles of torment of shame, blame, guilt, shoulda, coulda, wouldas, yes. all those things that just grief. Yes. And it would not break away. And I was confessing and I was doing all I knew to do. And I was like, Lord, I don't understand this. And so I'd go back through forgiving and forgiving me and doing it over and over and still I cycled in this. And about a year ago, the Lord showed me that I had forgiven, but I hadn't released. I still held this person responsible. Come on now, listen. And in that, I was holding, because those, the torment was just towards me. It wasn't even towards them. It was just me. And I had not, since I didn't release them, I was holding me responsible yes, still. Yes, so I did. I released. And from that moment till now, not once. Hallelujah. The torment broke. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Barbara. Miss Barbara. Yes, sir. You went from glory to glory. I did. I did. Yes. And you know, while I'm this thing, God's not mad at you. It doesn't matter what you've done. Here you go. It does not matter. For years, I, Pastor Don told me once, you know, you, let's see, how did she put it? She said, the devil doesn't have to beat you up. You take the stick from him and you beat yourself up. Yes, that's what happens. He's not mad at us. He only loves and forgives. He's abundant. Yes, Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now take that if word. If nothing else happens this entire no. service. That's right. The entire weekend, if nothing else had happened, yes. that was worth this whole That's weekend. Right. That's right. So take this word. How many of you can say amen to Miss Barbara and say, ma'am, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. I can be my own worst enemy. Forget binding the devil. I need to I need to change my my thinking and the way I talk to myself. We have all these bullying programs in school and stuff and I hate it. I hate bullies. I I don't hate them. I hate the the spirit. But we can be the biggest bully to our own self. Amen. Thank you for obeying the Lord. Amen. You just confirm something with me. And I'm going to get a fair. Okay. Can I get my girls up here? Hey, we, that is the.
That's it. Haley, I just ask for forgiveness for my past. I just, I can't, I can't live with it no more. I'm putting it away. I love y'all. From this day forward, I'm going to be a godly father. He had a son. I'm going to be a godly husband. I love y'all. by God, your faithfulness to the move of God was noticed. You went from glory to glory. Tomorrow, every one of you that raised your hand, tomorrow, I want you to come expecting, expecting. Don't limit your expectation to anything, but you come expecting God to move mighty in you and in this service, in this house, expect it. And then on top of that, because we're now, you have now stepped into something else, I wanna ask you to be here at the prayer service. But before you get here at the prayer service, you be charged up when you get in here. Don't come in here to get charged, be charged when you get here and then find out what happens. So spend some time. I don't care if it's just on the way from your house, to this parking lot and, and, and pray in the spirit pray just seeking God God I just want you to move the way you want to move use me and I will be obedient move in that house Lord be on the lips of those that are going to be speaking Wherever God leads you to pray, and if you don't know what to pray, pray in the Spirit. That's always safe. Always. These altars are open. We're going we're gonna to bring the, the service itself to a close to call it dismissed. You guys kind of stay where y'all at. Just for a little bit. But the altars are open. If you need time with the Lord, I'm telling you right now, this up here, this is energized. This up here, is if you want to get in the presence of God, I'm just, I can't seem to press in. Get up here. It's loaded. But you got to be the obedient one and do it. As we dismiss for you, for you guys that are going to leave, please be careful when you pull it out on that highway. Please make sure to hug somebody's neck before you leave. Look them in the eye and tell them, God loves you. You're not alone. Just by doing that, you're speaking words of encouragement. Prophesying to that person. I love you. And for the, I just tell you guys, for the, the staff of this house, we love you. We love you with an agape love. We don't judge you. And you're always welcome in your house. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for attending youth service. I don't have the mic. Jump up here and talk loud. You can yell at my lapel. Oh, it's coming.
talked to me and he told me hello okay. he had been telling me for weeks leading up to this service that there he showed me fire here and it was this raging fire but everyone was at peace People were walking up to it and just tossing things into it and walking away. And I knew, I knew that my husband, whatever else was there, would be gone in the glory this weekend. That was something I stood on and stood on and stood on. And I expected at some point this weekend breakthroughs would come. And also, something totally unrelated, but Miss Christy Barron, for two days, I have been having pregnancy symptoms. I am not pregnant. I don't want to be pregnant. <laughs> Knox is too little. I've had just, just symptoms and, and feelings of growing. And I believe your breakthrough is coming. It's coming and it's coming. Those babies are here. When he when I realized what that was, because I kept thinking, what is going on? Two days now. And I was like, that's what it is. I'm carrying this for someone else to tell her. It's coming. I'm not, I am not the only one. There are two or three others, women who have, that are not pregnant, that are not expecting to be pregnant, that are having pregnancy symptoms, feeling babies kick, that there can, there's no babies. You mamas in the house, your babies are coming. They're coming and our nursery's going to overflow. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I dismissed, but nobody's going, and I like that. You got something to say, Chef? Well, come on up here. This is the place to, sh to say it right here. The glory of God. I'm not one to usually grab the mic and say something, but uh, the Lord is telling me, that a couple of y'all in here looking for purpose. Purpose. That's, it's been in my spirit since yesterday night. Purpose, 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 purpose. And I'm not going to step into... I'm not going to be the one to tell you, but this altar is open. I just got mine. I, I've been praying for it, praying for it, praying for it. And I got mine. I'm going to be a pastor one day. It's been prayed, prophesied over me since I was itty bitty. And I've been denying it, denying it, denying it. And sometimes God will just accept it. He'll just put you in your face and he'll, he'll say accept it in a loving, in a loving matter way. And I'm just saying this altar is open. Come to him, arms open. And he will greet you where you are. And you will find your purpose. Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. It is good that we are here. It is wonderful that we are here. The presence of the Lord is so good. 